This is ABC 7 News at 5.30. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. Critics have called Sarasota's tree ordinances too strict, but one local state senator is proposing to get rid of them altogether. Greg Stubbe wants to strip local governments of their ability to regulate tree removal, cutting and disposal on residential properties. ABC 7's Adam Cellini joins us live from the historic Laurel Park neighborhood, which has spent years pushing for the city of Sarasota's current tree protections. Adam? Yeah, Scott and Jacqueline, good evening. The residents here in Laurel Park take a lot of pride in their shady oasis just south of downtown Sarasota. You can see that tree canopy going right down the middle of the roadway here, but uh, Senator Stubbe says the regulations that preserve that canopy are actually unconstitutional, and he wants to abolish them altogether. The canopy of trees in Laurel Park is unmistakable and protected by rules Jude Levy spent years pushing for Sarasota to pass. They've been developed by the citizens and the citizens had input on it and the people here care about the trees. Removing a native tree larger than four and a half inches in the city, even on your own property, requires a permit. And home builders must replace removed trees within a thousand feet of the removal site. Some have argued the rules are too strict, so a tree advisory committee was formed last year to take a second look. They just started and they have eight charges to look at. And clearly there needs to be some flexibility, judgment, a magistrate, maybe more professional input. But they may not get a chance to fix it if a bill passes this session prohibiting local government from restricting private landowners from trimming, removing, or harvesting their own trees. Senator Greg Stubbe filed that bill on behalf of residents, including himself, who have faced what he believes are unfair and heavy fines. So you have an inalienable right to your use in your private property. And I believe that these ordinances infringe on that right. And, I, and if we need to preempt that up to the state level, like we preempt a number of different statewide issues, then that's an option that the state has. However, City Commissioner Jen Ahern Koch says it should not be an option here. Trying to preempt the local authority from regulating certain items um, in their own community does not make sense. And this is one of them. Now, Senator Stubbe's bill applies only to private landowners, which means uh, under this bill, local governments would still be able to pass regulations for developers and commercial projects in their area. Live in downtown Sarasota, I'm Adam Cellini. Back to you. Adam, thank you so much. Well, is it possible a local high school had something in its water that caused students and staff to have cancer? The Florida Department of Health is investigating Bayshore High School. For years, alumni have been pushing for an investigation after hundreds of them developed cancers and other deadly illnesses. Finally, the Department of Health in Manatee County is taking the issue up and investigating to find out if this is a coincidence or a cancer cluster. What's happened in the past has happened in the past. You can't change that, but you can fix the future. It was a joint meeting between the Board of County Commissioners and the school board, and uh, they asked that the, the Florida Department of Health and Manatee County get involved in a health study. Coming up on ABC 7 at 7, we'll hear from an attorney, a reporter, former student at Bayshore who currently has cancer, and the chairman of the Manatee County School Board. Manatee County Fair is in full swing tonight. Hundreds coming out to Palmetto to enjoy exhibits, rides, and the food brings them out there, too. Of okay. course, one of my favorite parts. ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan joins us now with what is going on out there, Bob. I was just thinking about all the resolutions that are going to be busted over the next uh, 10 days. You know, people, oh, I'm not going to eat a lot. And yada. Well, we are here at the Manatee County Fair. It just opened at 5 o'clock, and it is about the food, too. Just not the rides and the 4-H, the music. There's just a lot of fun here at the uh, uh, fairgrounds in Palmetto. And get a look at this. This is a classic hamburger. Everyone comes out for it. Uh, this is uh, from Cattlemen's and Cattlewomen's. A uh, little station right there as you come into the Manatee County Fair. Always a, a fan favorite of mine. And then you have uh, pickle barrel beef tips, uh, which includes the green peppers, uh, mushrooms, onions, and mashed potatoes. And then you get to the beef tips right there. So, yes, it's not just about fried butter and elephant ears and, ca <laughs> and all the candy uh, that you can eat. It's a lot more here going on, and it's always a great time here at the Manatee County Fair with some great acts. We'll talk uh, to the organizer here and the director, uh, Dan West, in just a little bit. Let's get to the weather. Fog is a concern right now. We appreciate that, Mrs. Kennedy. You can have some of that. Go ahead. <laughs> 66 degrees right now, the dew point 66 and the humidity 100%. That makes it uh, foggy out there. The visibility down to a half mile. 
So again, it looks like tough driving conditions already, and it will get only worse as the sun uh, gets down. And uh, we are looking at that fog forecast right now. The wind and fog forecast is showing uh, quite a bit of fog rolling in again tonight, and it will be rather thick as we move on through time. And it looks as though uh, we'll see fog advisories up and down for the West Coast of Florida. Real quickly, uh, who do we have here? I'm Levi Kennedy. And your name is? Joanna Bradley. And you guys are getting pictures taken. Why is that? Uh, we're getting married in October. And so you're getting your, uh, your, your engagement pictures taken yeah. here? Yes, we are. And what do you think? Why are you guys uh, doing it here at the fair? Well, Levi's dad's the president, so <laughs> <laughs> it was the perfect place. Yeah, so the fair is a good place. You guys yeah. like the fair? Have you been to the fair before? Yeah. I, uh, well, this is her first time. It's so. my first time, and um, it's it's more than I could have expected. That's what I'm saying. This fair is, is one of the best, you know? I mean, it's yeah, all set up absolutely. for them. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the best. It is the best fair. Bar, bar none. Yeah, yeah. exactly what I was saying. And we had the uh, showed the little swine there earlier. The swine races yeah. are always my favorite. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I appreciate it. Congratulations, by Thank the way. You. And, Thank and you. Uh, have a good one, you guys. You in have October, congratulations. Uh, we are looking at great weather out here right now, but the fog is expected to roll and should not be a big concern for all the people coming out to the fair. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you so much, Bob. As opioid-related deaths in Florida continue to skyrocket, Governor Rick Scott and lawmakers have deemed the public health crisis a top priority during the current 60-day legislative session. Governor wants to spend $53 million to address the issue, with most of that money going to substance abuse treatment. Legislation is also moving that would restrict doctors to prescribing between three and seven days worth of opioids for patients with acute pain and would force physicians to consult a statewide database before prescribing any pain medications. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a problem in our streets in the state of Florida, and it's not potholes. It's opiates, it's heroin, it's overdoses, and unfortunately it's deaths. Other ideas presented by Democratic lawmakers include reinstating the State Office of Drug Control and increasing access to better substance abuse treatments for low-income Floridians who are on Medicaid. The Florida Senate is now requiring mandatory sexual harassment training. It will go into effect for all senators in the aftermath of scandals that have plagued the GOP-controlled legislature. A Senate panel voting to require each senator take an hour-long course in workplace and sexual harassment. It's expected the full Senate will soon adopt that rule. The Florida House already requires mandatory training for its members. Senators will be able to take that course online. A bipartisan group of senators say they've reached an agreement to protect hundreds of thousands of young immigrants from deportation. But it's not a done deal yet. As ABC's Kenneth Moten explains, those GOP and Democratic leaders are now working to convince other lawmakers. Uh, you guys hear anything you about this immigration deal? Negotiations on the Dreamers. Deal or no deal, Senator? Uh, no deal yet. <laughs> There's got to be one because we're running out of time. Senators looking for a bipartisan agreement on the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA. Top Republicans and Democrats will only say they're close to a deal. We have a, an agreement that we're, the bipartisan group I'm talking about, the mm -hmm. six of us working, that we're shopping among our colleagues now. Nearly 800,000 young immigrants brought to the U.S. as children waiting for word. They're panicked and they have a right to be. Um, they're worried about being deported. We need to try to find the right way to make a deal. And we are getting closer to making one. A possible Senate deal comes one day after House GOP leaders introduced their version of the bill. But it also includes funding for President Trump's wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. A no for Democrats. If Speaker Ryan is going to listen to the hard right in the House, we will have no deal. Trump, adamant a wall has to be a part of any DACA deal. We're okay with getting uh, a deal done as long as it falls into the parameters that the president laid out. A new Quinnipiac University poll says 79% of voters believe DREAMers should be allowed to remain in the U.S. and apply for citizenship. We do want to fix DACA. We want to fix it while addressing the root cause problems so that we don't have a DACA problem again. I mean, that's kind of common sense. Senators working on DACA are hoping for a fix by the end of the month. Since the president announced the end of DACA in September, nearly 13,000 Dreamers have lost their protections. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. Amid a national debate about immigration reform, the Florida House is expected to approve a measure banning so-called sanctuary cities. This despite the criticism of Im immigrant advocates and civil rights groups. The bill would require complying with U.S. immigration and customs enforcement detention requests, repealing current sanctuary policies, and providing information about immigration violations to state authorities. It's the rule of law that guarantees our freedoms to us. But in the case of immigration enforcement, it will ensure that we have national sovereignty 
and national security. And if we can do that, we're all going to be a lot safer. Undocumented immigrants are just as American as the rest of us. They just don't have the paperwork. This bill creates two criminal justice systems, one for undocumented immigrants and one for everyone else. If that proposal passes as it's expected to, it would be the third year in a row that the House has signed off on the measure. For the past two years, the state Senate has not gone along with the plan. Atlanta airport officials are looking to boost the facility's backup power in the wake of last month's power outage that crippled the world's busiest airport. The outage delaying travelers even here on the Sun Coast. The airport's general manager telling the City Council Transportation Committee he wants to set up a system of emergency generators that are powerful enough to keep concourses operating in the event of a similar situation. Still to come on your Sun Coast News, an increase in the flu virus continues to spread across the U.S. What doctors at Sarasota Memorial Hospital have been seeing and what you can do to reduce your risk. It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 17th annual Charlotte County Boat Show January 11th to the 14th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5 January 11th through the 14th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously, but she knows how to have fun too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile. And in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. It's time to take a road trip. If you love the beach, Alabama's Gulf Coast has 32 miles of sugar white sand and turquoise water. Looking for a room with a view? We have them. Beachside and Bayside. There's incredible history. Whoa! And the seafood is fresh from the Gulf. Another round of shrimp for my friends. Yeah. Alabama has a road trip with your name on it. Which one you gonna take? They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 17th annual Charlotte County Boat Show January 11th to the 14th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5 January 11th through the 14th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. The flu is being recorded in high numbers across the United States. The number of states experiencing high activity has now gone from 21 to 26 states. Although Florida is not in the high category for outbreak, local hospitals are seeing an increase in the number of cases showing up at walk-in clinics and hospitals. In Sarasota, 276 positive flu screenings have been diagnosed and 90 people have been admitted to Sarasota Memorial. To prevent the flu, you have two things. One is get the flu shot. You hear a lot of things about the flu shot, but it still protects you against at least two or three strains of influenza. The second thing really is just hand washing, having, being courteous, not sneezing and coughing on people, 
um, and uh, keeping yourself healthy and getting good rest and good sleep. In 2017, there were only 81 positive flu cases reported at SMH. So certainly keep washing those hands and maybe keep some hand sanitizer with you too. And if you're sick, stay home. Yes, yeah. of course. Don't spread it around. Let's get back to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. He joins us live tonight from opening night of the Manatee County Fair. Yeah, we talked about it earlier, the great hamburgers from Kettleman and Kettle Woman's uh, booth that they have set up here. That's always a tradition. They got the beef tips, the fried butter, we got the elephant ears, you know, it's all here. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than just food. And joining me now live is the general manager, Dan West. It's a pleasure to see you again. Dan, always see, you. seeing you here, tradition now. Uh, what else is going on here besides, besides the food and the ride? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, this is opening night where the gates are open, people are coming in. We've got a swine show going on right now in the Mosaic Arena and up in the front part of the fairgrounds we've got rabbit showmanship going on so our 4-H and FFA members are busy tonight here at the fairgrounds. On top of that a lot of artwork on display too that people can see and check out. Exactly up in our arts and crafts department we've got more than 2,000 entries and we also have an area in our exhibit hall where our elementary students have their arts from different elementary schools on display. My daughter's is there we'll see a picture of that in a minute but on top of that great musical acts too I know there's uh, always some good music here. We do tomorrow night we've got a uh, wonderful country group Shenandoah that's going to be performing tomorrow evening 7:30 in the main entertainment tent. So it's in the tent, so you don't have to worry about rain. And That's I think right. most of the rain will be over by then. Dan, right. appreciate you taking time, and it goes on through January the 21st. It's always a great, a good time meeting, and good, you, good pleasure seeing you again. Good seeing you. I'll tell you, here's that photo I mentioned of my daughter right now. It's always proud father showing that. Uh, you can see that's on display here at the Manatee County Fair, the artwork. She's been here every year. That's a little turtle that you see swimming through, and she uh, actually did that at her school, which is Rollette middle school. Well, weather headlines read like this, that uh, area of low pressure over the lower Mississippi Valley will bring a cold front our way. More fog already rolling in and will continue to spread inland and a clear but cooler weekend ahead. Perfect fair weather. And you can see from the radar imagery, we've had some showers developing in the interior portions of our viewing area. Uh, those will stay there. We're not anticipating any rainfall here uh, as we move through the night. So come on out and enjoy the rides and the great fair food. Uh, you can see that activity, a fairly strong line of showers now moving through eastern sections of Hardy and DeSoto counties. But this is the real deal uh, maker and uh, deal breaker, if you will, uh, for showers and storms in the afternoon on Friday. It's a cold front. It will move, uh, move through and bring in much cooler air our way. And you can see that area of low pressure off the Bahamas. That's moving away from Florida. Currently, it's all about the fog right now at the airport. 100% humidity, pressure 29.98 inches, and that is falling as that low pressure starts to slowly move in. 76 degrees, the high today. Despite the fog throughout much of the morning, it's still warmed up above average. This morning's low is 60. We'll see similar temperatures tomorrow, and then things will start to change. No rainfall to report. We could see up to a quarter inch of rain with some of the showers that move through, and there's a chance we could even see an isolated thunderstorm or two. Uh, temperatures now into the uh, mid-60s in the Gulf of Mexico. Still warm where that fog has not rolled in, but where the fog has moved in, cooling down a little bit. Here's a look at the future cast showing just fog around tomorrow morning. So if you have any outdoor activities like golf or tennis, it should be okay tomorrow morning. And then by the afternoon, we'll start to see that rain move in and that rain band will produce some showers. And then after that, it looks like uh, just cloudy skies occasionally with maybe a brief sprinkle here and there. And then everything clears out on Saturday and turns cool as winds switch around uh, to the north and northwest. Uh, nationally, what's happening? Well, the big story is that low pressure in the lower Mississippi Valley and you can see some snow earlier into Kansas City that is now shifted on uh, toward Illinois. There is going to be a pretty big snowstorm, though, developing in Indiana, Ohio, as well as in the Pennsylvania over the weekend as a result of that cold Arctic air spilling southward. Now, Kansas City, temperature right now 15, Cleveland at 58 degrees. Well, here's the forecast. As we see it, 70% chance for showers tomorrow, mainly afternoon, and then tapering off in the evening, cooler and clear and cold on Sunday. High temperatures in the low to mid 60s. But as I told the GM, the director, Dan West, I said, sometimes you want a little cooler weather because then people will get off the beaches and head out here to the Manatee County Fair and have a great time. We'll have more coming up at six. Obviously, uh, kids are already here having a great time going around the merry-go-round as well as the swine racers getting ready to start in just a few minutes from now. Back to you. Okay, looks fun. Thank you so much, Bob.
Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. If you're heading north, you may want to take a different route. Drivers are still seeing major delays northbound along I-75 after a crash near that University Parkway exit. First Street at US 41 is also blocked between Haven Boulevard and 6th Avenue. More jobs in the automotive industry will soon be coming to the United States. Japanese automakers Toyota and Mazda announcing plans to build a $1.6 billion joint venture auto plant in Huntsville, Alabama. The plant will eventually employ about 4,000 people. Several states, including Florida, competed for the plant, which will be uh, able to build 300,000 vehicles each year. Sam's Club is announcing that it is closing the doors at several locations across the country. While the Sam's Club in Sarasota should not be affected, the Sam's Club on Southdale, Mabry, and Tampa will be included in those closures. There are more than 650 Sam's Club locations across the U.S. and Puerto Rico. That announcement of Sam's Club closures coming on the heels of the parent company Walmart's announcement that it's boosting its starting salary for U.S. workers to $11 an hour. The move also giving a one-time $1,000 cash bonus to eligible employees and expanding the company's maternity and paternal leave benefits. Interesting yep. concept. Well, stay with us. Entertainment news is coming up next. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Winter White event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. My name is Stefan Campagna, we're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been arrested in the state of Florida, the state attorney's office is already working on your prosecution. It's time to work on your defense. So give us a call, we've got your back. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. He's a big time TV and movie star and he's headlining on the Suncoast this weekend. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Comedian Sean Wayans from the Wayans Brothers sits down with us. West Coast Black Theater Troupe previews their Dr. King celebration with us in song. Plus acrylic painting without ever touching a brush and Popey's Place joins us in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. My name is Luke Perry and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Selfless service is the guiding principle of every Army National Guard soldier. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. To be an Army National Guard soldier is to serve something greater than yourself. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our Winter White event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at CaliforniaClosets.com. Rock music legend Eric Clapton says he's losing his hearing. A 72-year-old admitting during an interview with the BBC that he has tinnitus, which is a constant ringing in the ear, usually caused by noise-induced hearing loss. Clapton is also dealing with weakness and pain in his hands and feet, which makes it difficult for him to play the guitar. Despite the pain, though, Clapton says he intends to continue performing. Jennifer Lopez is set to guest star on Will and Grace, playing two different roles. Entertainment Weekly reports that Lopez will play herself and also appear as her character, Detective Harley Santos from NBC's Shades of Blue. The actress and pop star has a history with the show, which is enjoying a second life after going off the air for a decade. 
pro wrestler John Cena is reportedly gearing up to host Nickelodeon's Kids Choice Awards for the second year in a row. Cena's return as uh, his host comes on the heels of another kid-friendly project. He was the voice for the title role in the animated film Ferdinand, which hit theaters last month. Nickelodeon's 2018 Kids Choice Awards will air live on March 24th. Well, stay with us. We'll be back with more news and weather after the break. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our winter white event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com.